Thank you so much, Dr. Arn, and, uh, and thanks to all of you today. At, uh, you know, I just look at it like I'm just a, a person that's honored to work with an organization that stands and fights on principle every day and gets to work with Americans all over, their, all over this country that are determined in their heart not to lose these great American freedoms. That's the key to the NRA. I mean, they'd run me out of town in five minutes. It's people one by one all over this country that are determined not to lose these freedoms. And the NRA, together through the NRA, it's amazing what we can do in terms of making a difference. It, I'm so honored to be here at Hillsdale today. You guys are a national gem, to tell you the truth. It, uh, Dr. Arn, thank you for the invitation. Bill Broadbeck, David Rainey, everything he said. I remember that story like yesterday, what happened. All I did was had the smarts to, to, to go, gosh, that is a brilliant young guy, and uh, I need to bring him into the NRA, even if it's only for a short amount of time as an intern. And, uh, but that's exactly the way it all happened. And it, gosh, it's amazing how, how fast time goes. It just seems like yesterday. So David, we're proud of you. It, uh, to, to all the faculty and staff, it's great to be here with you, the students. I've wanted to come and see Hillsdale for years and uh, people all over the country know what this institution means and the difference it's making. So thanks for having me. On behalf of our five million members, I want to thank you also for the tremendous support and for standing for those great American values that we all share. David Coy, one of the most distinguished members of our board of directors, thank, thank you for all you do for the NRA every day and for freedom. It's an honor to have you here today. And how about that shotgun team that David was talking about? Congratulations, guys. But the key is, we do it all together. And it's amazing what we can do together. I mean, patriotic Americans have always been up to the challenge of preserving our freedoms. And that's a motto that's reflected, it's a spirit that's reflected right in Hillsdale's motto. Uh, the motto of Hillsdale, strength rejoices in challenge. And in your own patented phrase, pursuing truth and defending liberty. You know, you think about that, pursuing truth and defending liberty, perhaps no other time, no other place could your motto at Hillsdale be more meaningful to what's happening in the country than right here and right now as we sit here this afternoon. When you think about it, America really is at war. We are right now in this country in the middle of a monumental struggle that could redefine our whole nation. It could redefine our freedom, and it's gonna redefine our very lives. The battlefield of that struggle is truth. The enemy that we're fighting on that issue is leftist zealots and their media enablers. And I know you see it every day. All you gotta do is turn on your TV. All you gotta do is pick up a newspaper. But I'll tell you, ever since the election, it's been raging in this country. And they're bent on one thing. They're bent on destroying the Trump presidency and seizing control of our society to impose their leftist agenda and impose their version of the truth upon us all. In this modern age of instant access to the internet, Facebook, Twitter, I mean, round the clock, cable news, media, more, we're barraged by this cacophony of debate and finger pointing that goes on in this country every day. And the lying and the twisting of the truth, it's creating discord, it's fueling anxiety, and it's almost got it in this country to a fevered pitch. What's going on is a deviously calculated campaign to destroy honest truth in this country and to pervert it to fit their own agenda and deceive us into how all of us should think, how all of us should feel, and how all of us should act, and to dictate what we should all believe. 
It really is a dangerous campaign for our country. It's built on lies, and you see it happening in cities all over this country. It's, it, it's often leading to violence. Unchallenged, it could destroy all that's good and all that's right and all that's true about our country. And, and here's what I'm talking about. Take a short look at this video I want to show you. They use their media to assassinate real news. They use their schools to teach children that their president is another Hitler. They use their movie stars and singers and comedy shows and award shows to repeat their narrative over and over again. And then they use their ex-president to endorse the resistance, all to make them march, make them protest, make them scream racism and sexism and xenophobia and homophobia, to smash windows, burn cars, shut down interstates and airports, bully and terrorize the law abiding, until the only option left is for the police to do their jobs and stop the madness. And when that happens, they'll use it as an excuse for their outrage. The only way we stop this the only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. I'm the National Rifle Association of America, and I'm freedom's safest place. What, what she says is really true. The left has launched an all-out attack against the truth. I mean, facts don't matter as long as the truth can be bizarrely contorted to fit whatever political whim it serves. There's no limit as to how far these days the truth can be stretched. One so-called truth is as good as any other. I mean, what the heck? And before long, you get to the point in this country where the entire concept of truth ends up being tossed out the window. Truth no longer becomes a bedrock principle. It's simply a political device. All you have to do is look at the cover of Time magazine. Is truth dead? Yet the cover story of that article was anything but a defense of truth. It was an all-out hit job designed to call President Trump a liar, no matter the facts, no matter what. Did the Obama administration spy on the Trump team? The first thing the national news media did was call Trump a liar. Whether it was true or not, it didn't matter to them. Defending their darling former president, Trump the truth, and ignored President Obama's own history, when you think about it. In 2012, the Obama administration secretly subpoenaed the phone records of Associated Press journalists. The Obama administration also, and I think you all will remember this, collected the phone records of Fox News reporter James Rosen, who had done absolutely nothing wrong. They seized his personal emails. They even seized his parents' phone records. In 2013, documents exposed the Obama administration for surveilling telephone conversations, and you'll remember this also, of 35 world leaders. Does anyone really think they didn't spy on the Trump administration? Just a few days ago, Evelyn Farkas, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, essentially admitted they spied. She said the Obama administration sought to gather, quote, intelligence on candidate and President-elect Trump. And then Farkas even admitted she worried about the consequences of the Trump team finding out how we knew certain information. Just think about that. And that doesn't even mention Susan Rice, President Obama's national security advisor. If you've been watching TV the last couple of days, you probably saw this, but it's worth looking at again. I began by asking about the allegations leveled today by House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes that Trump transition officials, including the president, may have been swept up in surveillance of foreigners at the end of the Obama administration. I know nothing about this. I was surprised to see uh, reports from uh, Chairman Nunes on that uh, count today. There were occasions when I would receive a report 
in which uh, a U.S. person was referred to. Name not provided, just U.S. person. And sometimes in that context, in order to understand the importance of the report and assess its significance, it was necessary to find out or request the information as to who that U.S. official was. You know, she's sure lucky because none of that matters to Time magazine because the real truth just doesn't fit their agenda. Truth has been dead at Time magazine a long time ago. 50 years ago, Time prose this question, is God dead? No wonder Time has been losing money and subscribers for years. In fact, it's kind of been relegated to the shelves of supermarket tabloids. But, you know, time just doesn't get it. So let's just spell it out for him right now. Truth is not dead, and neither is the Lord our God. But what has happened is truth has certainly been buried in an avalanche of lies and arrogant hypocrisy of the left-wing media. You know, the liberal media elites, they think they're smarter than we are. They think they know better than we do. Here's an example of their arrogance right here. We have to give some credit to the American people that they're somewhat intelligent and that they know the difference between an opinion show and a news show. Yeah. You're, not, you're cynical. Look at that. Yeah. I am cynical because, uh, you know. You think we're bad for America? You think yeah. I'm bad for America? Yeah. You do. In the in the long haul, I think you really? and all these opinion That's shows. That's sad, Ted. No, you know why? That's sad. Because you're very good at what you do, and because you have you have attracted a significantly you more influential. The well, let me finish the sentence. Let me finish the sentence I'm before listening. you do that. With all due respect. You yes. Take you have point. you have attracted people who are determined that ideology is more important than facts. Yeah, I mean, that's Ted Koppel. I mean, he's sure no stranger to truth twisting himself, especially about the Second Amendment. And he's sitting there calling Sean Hannity bad for America. Why? Because Koppel thinks his opinion is better than Sean's. Koppel thinks his truth is better for America. You know, Sean's a friend of mine, and, and he can sure stick up for himself, and believe me, he is. But bear in mind that that clip I showed you was all CBS aired of an interview that lasted almost an hour. Koppel showed you only what he wanted the viewer to see. And what he did is he buried everything else in the interview. Bear in mind also that that was CBS where Dan Rather was forced to resign for faking, completely faking a story about George Bush. A lot of you will remember that. You know, the media lies and perversions of truth to fit their own agenda are accelerating at a ravenous pace. And our very nation's cornerstone of truth is at risk. One of America's greatest threats, and I believe with this with all my heart, is a national news media that has gotten to the point where they fail to tell the truth. And, and believe me, all of us involved with the Second Amendment and the NRA and the firearms issue, that's something we've been dealing with for decades. Back in 2003, when the 10-year Clinton gun ban was set to expire, CNN deliberately went out and faked a story to mislead the American public. I happened that day to be sitting in their studio doing an interview live. And I'm like, okay, I'm here. They can't stop me. I'm live. I'm going to light myself on fire right in front of the whole country. And we're going to have it out on the truth right here, right now. And that's what I did. Take a look. Now we give you the other side from the executive vice president of the National Rifle Association, Wayne LaPierre. Wayne, thanks for being with us. Hi, Kara. Good to be with you. Well, if the ban on assault weapons expires, what kind of weapons would be legal? Kara, let me say this at the start. I'm glad you ran that story because apparently the only difference between the New York Times and CNN is that when a reporter for the New York Times fakes a story, he's fired, and at CNN, he's not. 
Your bureau chief, John Zarella, deliberately faked the story yesterday intending to show that the performance characteristics of banned firearms on the list are somehow different from the performance characteristics of firearms not on the banned list. He was, a, he was implying that these were uh, machine guns or fully automatic guns. That's not true. Uh, Mr. LaPierre, I, a, I have to stop you there. No one fakes stories at, he, at CNN, and John Zarella definitely did not fake a story at CNN. Here, You're very off base. I'm going to let you say your opinion, keep, and let's right, have well, a conversation, but don't accuse uh, our reporter of faking well, any no, story, sir. Let me say it again in front of the whole country. Your reporter faked that story yesterday. It deliberately misread right, the gonna, viewer. There's no, way, there's no way it could be true, and I we're, challenge we're, CNN to defend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the deal, and, and here's the sad thing, though. The following Monday, that happened on Friday, the following Monday, CNN couldn't even make an honest retraction. They, what they put on the air, they called it additional information. And, and, and what they showed proved that everything I said was true and that their story on Friday was completely phony. But the really sad thing about it is this. If I hadn't been sitting there live in that studio on Friday and caught him like a bank robber running out of the bank with a bag of money and the die exploding all over him, they never would have aired the so-called correction. And that's the really sad thing as to what's happened to, to, to media, media in this country these days. They do it over and over and over, day after day after day. And they've been lying about our gun rights and our constitutional freedom for as long as I can remember. And that's getting to be a pretty long time. I mean, most of the media, the honest truth is, they wouldn't know a semi-automatic from a sharp stick. But it's true. But they've spouted for decades these fake, made-up, phony terms like assault weapons that they put out there. I mean, that's kind of become their go-to buzzword to deceive and scare people about any gun they don't like. And they deceive the public. They put out there all kinds of images of military and fully automatic firearms. I mean, they say black guns with polymer guns are more powerful than those with wooden stocks. They, they, they say that a pistol grip or a lug nut somehow magically increases the power of a gun. I mean, heck, I mean, any village idiot can tell you that purely cosmetic features don't make a firearm more powerful. No more than lipstick and powder make a pig more attractive. I mean, it, it's true, but, but, but it doesn't matter that, I mean, no matter the truth, the leftists over and over and over and, and their media enablers, they keep dressing up that pig with one lie on top of another and another sleight of the hand deception on top of another. I, they, they do it even with terminology. I mean, take the term gun violence as if the gun suddenly awakened to a life of its own and had little legs and went running around and, and somehow committed a crime. No human necessary, by the way. I mean, the term gun, very term gun violence is another fake buzzword all the media and political leaks conjure up to scare the American public. But it's dangerous because the term ignores the true problem, which is violent criminals. It's shameful what they do because the term is aimed at blaming the rights of law-abiding American gun owners. And it's blatantly hypocritical because they don't use similar terms to describe any other form of violence. I mean, think about it. After an automobile tragedy, the media never talks about car violence. After, after some horrible drowning incident, they never talk about swimming pool violence. I mean, the, the air of hypocrisy and lies has become so thick with the media, it's become hard for Americans to breathe in this country. One of the biggest lies is this whole myth of background checks. I mean, make no mistake, more than anyone, the National Rifle Association wants to keep firearms out of the hands of violent criminals, violent felons, drug dealers with guns, and people with serious mental illnesses. 
That's been our position for decades. It's why the NRA supported a complete comprehensive background check at the point of sale and the immediate arrest, arrest of any prohibited person in a gun store trying to buy a gun. But the truth is, despite the fact the NRA supported money every step of the way to the system, no such comprehensive system exists. A huge number of states don't even put their mental records into the, into the system. There's all kinds of criminal records not in the system. The elites, they don't care. It's one more lie and media lie on top of another to push their failed system and to try to expand it. The truth they won't tell you is what I just said. The background check that NRA supported probably 20 years ago, it's nowhere near comprehensive. Like I said, the criminal records are incomplete. The mental health records are missing. Felons and criminals fall through the cracks of that database every single day. And yet the left keeps pushing it and keeps pushing it as a way to impose greater restrictions on the rights of law-abiding Americans. And here's the amazing thing. Even when the system does flag down a criminal standing right in a gun store trying to buy a gun, all right? The system goes, okay, there's a felon right there standing right there trying to buy a gun and we, the government, know it. They never, almost never arrest them. The last year I saw they arrested something like 13 out of 76,000. I mean, the, the Obama administration actually went before Congress and called them meaningless paperwork violations unworthy of prosecution. That's what they called them because their real goal is not to stop criminals. Uh, what their real goal is, is to put every law-abiding American under the thumb of the federal government, tie their Second Amendment rights up in red tape, and ultimately put every obstacle you can in the way of the honest citizen, and the heck with the bad guys, they don't care about that. All you gotta do where they want this to go is look at a state like Washington State to see their real goal of their modern 21st century objective uh, of background checks. In Washington State now, where they've got pretty much what they want, if you're at a range and you wanna borrow a buddy's firearm, you can't do it without going through a check. If you give a gun to a buddy, you can't. If you want to hand it back to him at a range, you can't do that until he goes through another background check. And don't dare think about giving a firearm or loaning a firearm to your son, your daughter, or a friend for a morning out in the field with your shotgun. Out in Washington State, what they call that is a transaction. So you better go get a background check if you're thinking about doing that or you're going to go to jail. I mean, it, it's, it's got the point where it makes no sense at all for law-abiding people, and it has nothing to do with criminals. And now even liberal judges have gotten the act of perverting the truth to suit their own agenda. You remember reading this the last couple of weeks. The Fourth Circuit Court just recently snubbed its nose at the United States Supreme Court and legal precedents by upholding Maryland's ban on semi-automatic firearms. The Supreme Court's Heller decision explicitly recognized the constitutional right of Americans to own commonly used and owned firearms. But the Fourth Circuit, they just ignored it. They completely ignored the United States Supreme Court and they went ahead and upheld the ban on the most popular rifle in America. I mean, yeah, eventually that could twist somehow back up to the Supreme Court, but for those citizens denied their constitutional rights, it's gonna take years. If it's gotten to the point in this country where legal precedent, in fact, can be so easily circumvented and ignored, if a lower court can so cavalierly neuter the highest court in our land, it's game over. Law, order, and justice are gone. Here's another one. The Attorney General of Massachusetts. You can sure add the AG in Massachusetts to the list of deceivers and truth spinners. 
That state, they've had a ban on, on, on some semi-automatic firearms for a while. But Maura Healey, the Attorney General, decided it didn't ban enough. So she announced that she's going to ban tens of thousands of more commonly owned rifles, popular rifles purchased by citizens of Massachusetts, her own constituents, not based on any evidence that these firearms are inherently more dangerous. They're not. Not based on any evidence these firearms are predominantly found at crime scenes. They're not. She apparently just doesn't like the way they look. And she just doesn't like them. So she bans them, and then she bakes a lie to sell the ban. The lying has become completely absurd. But it's also dangerous. And it's also life-threatening to all of us. Let me give you another one. And I'll tell you, this one, I just shake my head at the whole American news media. And I go, shame on you. And... It, it, it's, it, it's just shame on you. I've never seen so many poorly researched and misinformed stories as I've seen on this whole issue of a terror watch list. If you listen to the media, you'd think the National Rifle Association set up the terror watch list. I mean, the truth is, it was set up by the FBI and federal law enforcement exactly the way they wanted it the way the FBI and federal law enforcement wanted it. What happens is if someone on that list tries to buy a firearm, a silent ping goes to the federal government, goes to the agency that actually put the person's name on the list. The, it, they then call the agent to put the person's name on the list and say, okay, this is happening right now. What do you want to do? Do you want to deny it? And federal law enforcement all know that they've got conspiracy, cons conspiracy to commit terrorism. They've got, if they run a stop it, they've got ways that they can do it. Or do you want to do this? Do you want to watch it? Do you want to follow it? Follow this person 24-7. Do you want to build a case? Do you want to see the patterns? Do you want to see the associations? I mean, that's why the list was established. 99% of the time, that's what happens. They don't want to deny it outright. They want to see what's happening, who they're talking to, what's going on, and build the case. Watch, monitor, discover the co-conspirators, break up the entire network. That's the purpose of the list. In fact, when Senator Dianne Feinstein asked the FBI director whether or not he supported legislation to automatically deny the transaction, the FBI director told Dianne Feinstein, if Congress did that, if Dianne Feinstein and Chuck Schumer and all the rest of them did that, they'd blow up all kinds of criminal investigations. Have you heard any of that in the media? And that doesn't even get to the due process issue of federal bureaucrats putting people's name on a secret list, denying their constitutional rights without any due process without any judicial oversight, without any judge, without any adjudication, just, hey, secretly, one branch of government put somebody's name on a list and uh, deny them their constitutional rights. I mean, their problem on that issue is not the NRA, it's the Constitution of the United States. They not only want to trample the Second Amendment, they want to trample the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendment also. It's all a dangerous form of politics. And the only way they get away with it is it's enabled these days by a media that almost never tells the truth. The selective enforcement of federal law is one of the most dangerous lies of all. When federal gun laws are not enforced, when violent gangs and criminals with guns are not prosecuted, when violence and murder, what happens? When, when they're not prosecuted, violence and murder becomes a way of life in places like Chicago because there is virtually no federal prosecution of federal gun laws in Chicago. As a result of that, the criminals in that town, they have no fear. Last year, according to the Chicago police, there were 762 murders in that city. I mean, think about that, 762 murders. I think that's about half the undergraduate enrollment here at Hillsdale. 
Imagine if half of the fellow students were gone, murdered. Now imagine if your president absolutely did nothing about it at all. While Chicago has festered and burned for the last eight years, President Obama didn't do anything about his hometown. For eight long years, thousands of innocent victims were being slain. Obama ignored the truth. He failed to order federal prosecutors to immediately prosecute and imprison felons with guns, drug dealers with guns, and criminal gang members with guns. He failed to do it. Under existing federal gun laws, he could have taken every one of those bad guys off the of Chicago streets for five to 20 years. He could have held them without bail, and he could have made that city safe. The only good news is Obama is now gone. The even better news, and the even better news is our new Attorney General Jeff Sessions recently ordered the Department of Justice to focus on the bad guys and increase federal firearms prosecutions of violent criminals all over this country. You know, I got a lot of experience on this issue. Back in the late 90s, I remember sitting in my office and the phone rang and the guy on the other end said, Wayno, you don't know me. He said, I'm an assistant U.S. attorney. I'm a prosecutor down in Richmond, Virginia, which was the third most violent city in the country at that time. And he said, I'm not an NRA member. I don't even own a gun. But he said, I've been reading your speeches. And he said, I'm gonna give you a chance to put your money where your mouth is. He said, here's what I'm gonna do. He said, I'm putting the federal gun laws on a card. And I still have the card. This is one of them right here. That he, that he went out and laminated them. He said, I'm gonna walk into the Richmond Police Department tomorrow morning and I'm gonna tell every officer, I wanna make you a deal. Every time you see a drug dealer with a gun, criminal gang member with a gun, felon with a gun, call my office 100% of the time. We're gonna prosecute the case. We're gonna hold them without bail and we're gonna make this city safe together. He did that. He said, what I want out of NRA was a million dollars because I wanna put signs up all over this city let, letting the bad guys know exactly what we're gonna do. I drove down there the next day, NRA handed a million dollar check to, to, to that campaign and we put the signs up and that US attorney did 350 cases the first year and he cut murder with guns in that city by 60 per 70 percent the very first year. And he had, he had the African American community, the business community, the gun community, he had everybody behind the program. I mean, what, what, I, and I remember him saying to me, Wayne, I'm doing this, I got the idea because I was home watching TV with my little girl. And there was another murder on TV and she turned to me and said, Daddy, can't somebody do something about it? And he thought, I'm the somebody. And I remember him also telling me, he goes, to let, and most of this was going on in, 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 the, in the black community in Richmond. He said, Wayne, the benign neglect of what's going on in that community is horrible. If it was going on in a white neighborhood, our government would stop it tomorrow morning. He said, those moms trying to raise kids in inner cities, they wanna make their kids safe. They don't want drug dealers with guns and criminal gang members with guns out there on their doorstep when their child walks out the door. They're, they're, they're at risk every time they walk out. They want them taken off the street and in prison. They want their neighborhood safe. Well, finally, we have a president of the United States and an attorney general of the United States in Jeff Session who understand that simple truth. If you want to make our streets and our communities safer, pick up the bad guys, arrest them, prosecute them, imprison them, and plain and simply, that's what makes America safe. And that's what works. <laughs> Yet no matter the outlet, the national news media, they're going to go to war and they're gonna stretch the truth as far as they can. I mean, I look at it and I go, when did these, this, these guys stop doing their job and simply decide to become PR flax for the destruction of the country? It's, in so many ways, it seems to be all about their own celebrity. 
their own ratings, their own agenda. Uh, the New York Times, I mean, they have a clear leftist agenda they want to sell. On the other hand, I mean, you have outlets like Fox that have a more conservative agenda, and yeah, they want to sell that too, I guess. I mean, both have a following, and both lay claim to an authoritative status. And both point fingers at each other with accusations of bias and falsehood. I mean, you have MSNBC, you have ABC, Breitbart. I mean, name the outlet you want these days, from Yahoo News to blogs and Twitters. They all claim ownership of the truth. And that presents a very real challenge, especially for the young men and women here at Hillsdale College today, and young men and women throughout the country. How do you seek these days and find truth? Even now, social media giant Facebook is exploring plans to identify and weed out so-called fake news and information, as if Facebook somehow owned the truth. One of, one of their options that they've come up with, and boy, good luck with this, based on what we know about all them, is to consult the Washington Post and ABC. Yeah, I know. I mean, give me a break. As if any of them own the truth. You know, it's gotten to a point where Americans have no faith in any of these arrogant elites in this country who every day are seeking to police the truth. And it's no wonder, according to recent polls, 60% of Americans say they don't trust the media to report the news accurately or fairly. I, I look at that 60% and I, I honestly go, I wonder how the heck you found anybody. It, uh, be, but in poll after poll, I'll tell you this, Americans, and gosh, I'm proud of this, and we've all done this together, those of you who've been part of the NRA, they consistently say they view the NRA more favorably than the White House, both chambers of Congress, and either national political party. A majority of Americans, yeah. They admire and they trust the NRA, and here's why I think they, we've gotten to that point. We say out loud what we believe. We always speak the truth, even when it may be hard. And gosh, we go out and we fight like hell to defend it. Our success, our victories, our strength, as long as I've been with this organization, which is now almost 40 years, it's always been grounded in truth. In an age of truth wars, where fact-based truth is becoming harder and harder to find, the NRA is always there with the truth, and I promise you this, the NRA will always be there with the truth. In fact, watch this. To every dishonest member of the failing American news media, let me explain why you've never been less trusted, less credible, or less respected. For decades, you ignored calls from millions of gun owners to just tell the truth. All you had to do was just get the facts right about our guns and our freedom. But you never even pretended to listen. Instead, you weaponized the First Amendment against the Second. And now the whole country sees you for the mockery we've always known. Your claim to the truth is as legitimate as a thief's. If the fate of individual freedom had rested in your hands, America would have fallen long ago. But Americans put their trust somewhere else. And now, in that place, stands the most trusted defender of individual freedom in American history. We're the National Rifle Association of America, and we're freedom's safest place. You're the first to see that spot, but... It's going to hit the national airwaves all over this country in a week or so. And to defend the Second Amendment, the NRA, every day we're deploying the First Amendment to do it. We've developed innovative, state-of-the-art news content platforms. We're delivering truth right over the top of the old legacy media that distorts everything. We're going straight to people all over this country. And we're going to be right in front of America every single day from now on for everybody to see. So write this down, nratv.com. Check it out. 
We're doing 24-hour broadcasting every day straight to the American people with the truth. And the left-wing media, they're never going to get away with perverting the truth anymore to distort any of our freedoms, Second Amendment or any of the rest of them. We're going to speak for ourselves. We're speaking loudly. We're speaking clearly. And we're going to speak out, by gosh, on any issue that affects us, from constitutional rights to crime to national defense to health care to taxes. The NRA is standing for freedom, and we are going to be heard. The The American people has come to, have come to trust the NRA, and the NRA has put all of its faith in the American people. Because in their hearts, Americans feel the truth about their country. Americans believe the greatest nation on earth is right here, the United States of America. And they believe we are the nation, greatest nation on earth because we are the freest people on earth. Americans know our freedom that we have as Americans separates us from every other nation on the planet. They know our freedom makes us stronger than other countries. And Americans know our freedom makes us better than other countries. And the five million men and women of the NRA believe that truth with all their heart. We stand and we fight for that truth every single day. And of a lying left-wing media and the lying political class, the NRA will never, and by gosh, I mean never, surrender one ounce of truth or freedom. I promise you that. We will defend, yeah, we will, we will defend our liberty granted by God and guaranteed by the United States Constitution. And I challenge you, and I challenge folks all over this country, stand with us, stand and fight every single day for what you believe in your heart. Don't get pushed around by the media. Think it through, stand up for what you know in your gut is right. Stand and fight for truth, stand and fight for freedom, and stand and fight to preserve America as truly the greatest nation the, in mankind has ever seen. Let's do it together. Our freedom is what it's about. It what, it's what makes us great. And the only way we're gonna not lose it is fight for it. It's an honor to be with you. It's an honor to be here at Hillsdale. And thank you for what you're doing every day.